Hi everyone, I'm Mel Prest and I'm speaking to you from my studio in San Francisco where I live and work. And I wanted to answer a few questions about my work for Gallery Urbi. Yes, making the large work is pretty physical and I love it. I love that it takes a lot of time, um, at least a month if I go start to finish, but um, that isn't really how long it takes. It usually takes a lot longer. Um, I get the wooden panels made for me and then I seal them with a couple layers of gloss medium, then a couple layers of hard sandable gesso, and then a couple layers of molding paste, which I wet sand with a sanding sponge and water. I then start working with colors and if I'm lucky, it's the first or second or third color I put down. Sometimes the paintings have many layers of a ground color and you can see that on some of my smaller works. On some of the smaller paintings, I will keep um, sort of a color diary. So this has five colors. Uh, it's also glow in the dark, which you can't see, um, which then ends up, you, you never know all these colors were there, but this is my thought process. Um, uh, on the large panels, I use the same brush as I use on the small panels or the same brushes. I apply the large um, ground color with a fan brush and I apply the lines um, all by hand. There's no ruler, no tape, no hard edge. Um, that is a double zero brush. The double zero brush looks like this. It's very small. And this one is a little bit trashed. And um, yeah, it's one line at a time. The lines start to accumulate and start to create patterns when I layer a second set of lines over the top. And although sometimes they look very structural and planned. They're actually very intuitive and they evolve over time. And I spend a lot of time looking at them in process. And lately I started to take process pictures that show the way the paintings start to come together. The colors sometimes come from scents, sometimes they come from flowers or the sky, which is so beautiful and amazing to look at, no matter where you live out here because of the fires and pollution, we get a lot of pinks and, um, and this time of year in the winter, much more blue. Um, and then, yeah, the sunrises and sunsets and the strange things that happen. Like, um, there are a lot of strange physics that happen in the sky. I also get colors from memory. Sometimes color just comes into my brain and it has memories or feelings attached to it that I can't really explain. They're just all kind of present at the same level. And that's the color I'm looking for when I'm painting. I'm looking for a color that I recognize that isn't something like ultramarine blue, for example. The works on paper are new for me. I haven't worked on paper in several years, except I do have a small body of work of 
small postcards that I create and send to friends and collectors. And these are something fun to do with gouache and watercolor and metallics. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, in a giant studio building um, was a former mattress factory. So we have great like freight elevators and there's you know, like a hundred people maybe in the building. And unfortunately it was closed for three months because of COVID. So I was at home working and working on paper. Um, my favorite 300 pound Fabriano hot press paper that's been made in Fabriano, Italy for 400 years, maybe 500 years. The works on paper are called Time is Knots on a String. And that title arises from the way we used to keep time before there were trains and clocks and iPhones and everything else. We had devised all different ways of creating time, but time is not on a string comes from the idea of we create time by events that happen. And so the events are knots. And this was a way that uh, ancient people used to hold time and create a sense of time passing it was through events, you know, negative, positive, rituals, feasts, um, deaths, births, harvests, things that were so much embodied in land and in our human bodies. With all the changes, happening due to closures and shutdowns and working at home. It felt like time was abruptly shift, shifting where sometimes a day would feel like an hour or an hour would feel like a week. And even being two days late for an appointment during the pandemic, which is totally unlike me. I realized how much our internal clocks are shifting and finding a place in this different time that we're in. It's not a sad thing, it just is. It's a way of understanding time in this present moment. I like working on paper in this way of setting up the different quadrants. So there are 12 lines converging into a central point, not unlike a, a void or, you know, just a, a, a point of meditation. And how the lines radiating from that central point wish to be perfect and yet are imperfect um, because they're made by hand. This work is about change and time and movement. Over the last two years, there's been a lot of change and a lot of time and a lot of movement. And I wanted to embody this in the painting by using more mica, metallic, interference, glow in the dark, and fluorescent colors, colors and textures and paints that change as you look at them or you move around them. I also like the idea of creating these webs that would become tight, and loose and stretch and feel like they're running, you know, and converging. So also there's time embodied in the work of making these pieces and how I'm starting to see how I can make that more clear to the viewer. There are these new rings within the painting if you can see behind me, 
Um, normally when I'm painting, I start at a point with a loaded brush and pull the line out. As soon as I run out of paint, I'll do the same thing, reload my brush. Each line probably is reloaded four or five times, depending on its length. I normally try to hide that reloading process because I'm painting by hand and I want it to look clean or even. And by not hiding, I feel like I'm creating a different sense of the space within the painting, almost like concentric voids or circles. And this is just from showing you where I put the paint on my brush. I also like the idea of bringing in a new structure to the painting. I've always worked on squares and rectangles. And I think that working on a square, I'm always reinforcing that space of the square somehow by the architecture of the lines. But now I'm thinking about how a circle can go wrong in a square or different kinds of shapes can go wrong within the square without taking away from the wholeness of the painting. Although I've been working with line and color for so many years, I feel like I'm digging a deep well rather than digging a whole lot of different wells around in a plot of land. I'm going deeper and deeper, trying to find what else I can see there. I think I like Saul LeWitt in the way he worked, using line and color, although he followed directions and it wasn't important if he made the work or someone else did. But for me, I always want to make my own work and I'm interested in the little idiosyncratic things I do when I'm working, what ends up being exposed or discovered. 